Thank you for kind introduction. Uh, in the past, I focused on the treatment of breast cancer patients, but now I'm paying more attention to the management of side effects. I think parents are aware of this, and the topic of my presentation today is since I'm a female doctor, uh, there are some practical questions that uh, patients are asking um, to me. And that would be the, the major content of my presentation. As you probably know, breast cancer is one of the most frequent um, cancers around the world. Despite that, there are chemotherapy and targeted ther therapy and endocrine therapies. With uh, the help of these uh, systematic treatment, uh, there are better results. And hormone receptor positive hormones uh, are taking up about 70% of breast cancer patients. HR positive breast cancer shows characteristics that the, the growth of a tumor is based upon the um, hormone. So the major therapy is about reducing the estrogen. And the kind of endocrine therapy in adjuvanton setting are different. In premenopause, it's uh, uh, the estrogen is uh, created in overly. So tamoxifen is used for premenopausal uh, patients. Depending on the recurrence rate and risk, sometimes the inhibitor of ovarian function is used as an injection. And after post after menopause, there are no creation of estrogen. So aroma inhibitor is mainly used and femara and adumindex extine are uh, commonly used uh, drugs for the patients so uh, the selection or choice could be different between premenopausal and postmenopausal. The duration of treatment is five to ten years. Then uh, what are the benefits of this endocrine therapy? For HR positive patients with tamoxifen compared to no uh, tamoxifen group, there is a 30% reduction of occurrence and 25% of reduction in um, survival, uh, uh, mortality. For postmenopausal with aromatase, there is additional on um, 3% on top of the mentioned benefits. So these are uh, benefits, but it's not easy for patients to uh, take medicines for five to 10 years. So even in the studies with a proven results within two years, discontinuation is about 10% and in five years, uh, more than 15% of patients are um, reported to discontinue uh, taking medicines. For clinical uh, reporting, the discontinuation rate is much higher, up to 73% after five years of treatment. Now, discontinuation, uh, will it have an impact on the uh, result of the treatment? Of course. Once prescribed, you uh, need to take the uh, p drugs for longer than a week, more than 80%. That is 90% um, of the adherence. And as you can see from the slide, in five years, the recurrence ratio, the difference is 1.4 to 2.3 times. So non-adherent have a 1.6 to 2.3 times higher risk of breast cancer recurrence. Uh, many patients say they take uh, medicines, but sometimes they do not. So we have to check by uh, blood screening. And for those adhering to uh, the um, a medicine, you can also see the 2.3 2 times difference of the breast cancer uh, recurrence. So uh, HR positive uh, patients must take um, all of the medicines prescribed. What would be the reason of discontinuation? It's due to side effects. When we talk about side effects, there are specific um, 
side effects of each drug. Endocrine therapy is suppressing um, estrogen. When estrogen is suppressed, there are a series of side effects. As for drug-specific side effects of tamoxifen, it's quite rare, but there are serious side effects. For example, as you can see from the uh, description, there is a risk of endometrical cancer. Uh, it is uh, proportionate to the period of taking the medicines, 1.6 uh, times for five years and 3% uh, for 10 years. So the frequency itself is not very high. However, the uh, medicines we take to cure our cancer, if it could increase the risk of other types of cancers, that is a big burden for both doctors and patients. So we have, we have to check this before uh, the prescription. And tamoxifen is a very specific uh, drug. Uh, for some cases, it suppresses estrogen. Sometimes uh, it works in an opposite way, and there is a blood uh, clot, and that can lead to heart uh, failure, and uh, the blood clot can be uh, generated uh, in a brain. So there is 1.2% of this possibility. With tamoxifen, there is a cataract uh, probability of 18%. But this is also related to aging process. So c compared to non-tamoxifen, uh, there is a 40% more uh, risk. These, not all of these side effects can be predicted, but uh, obesity can uh, be also a factor. Tamoxifen takers, if they smoke, it could lead to blood clot generation. So you have to quit smoking. And regular uh, checkup would be required. Then uh, when should I report what kind of symptoms to doctors? When you have irregular um, menstruation, or chest pain, or short of breath, or um, blurry um, eyesight, and uh, if there is a swelling on um, lower limbs, and if you lose eyesight, you need to talk to doctors. So please uh, make sure you consult with your doctors uh, to make sure uh, whether to continue this um, treatment or not. Next are side effects of estrogen deprivation therapy. Basomotor symptoms, uh, weight increase, and sexual dysfunction, mood change, sleep disturbance, uh, weight gain are representative uh, side effects. It, it's not just because of the endocrine therapy. Uh, this can also be found in non-patients. But with uh, the therapy, there is a higher frequency of uh, finding these symptoms. So uh, these are highly frequently found and which uh, lowers the quality of life. And for our patients, I would like to discuss how we can manage these symptoms. Let's start with vasomotor symptoms. Uh, it includes night sweat and hot flushes. So for example, uh, you feel heaviness on the head and um, blushing and heartbeat uh, getting faster um, and chilling. These symptoms are found in 35 to 40 percent of um, hormone therapy. Most, in most cases, uh, the level of symptoms are not serious, but in some cases, it could get serious. And we have to see how long it has been after um, menstruation, after uh, menopause. So there are differences in the frequency and um, sev severity of symptoms. And before menopause, if I uh, received um, hormone replacement uh, therapy, um, then the, these symptoms are uh, severe. Overweight patient 
as well also report these symptoms for night sweat 4% of patients report this symptom, uh, which will lead to sleeping disorder. So um, these are lowering the quality of lives of patients, and we need to have more proactive management. For mild symptoms, uh, non, uh, pharmacological intervention is not required. So this is the list of non-pharmacological intervention. Through various uh, clinical studies, uh, we found out that there are differences of having these therapies and not having these therapies. Uh, as the color uh, is uh, clearer, the effectiveness is much higher. Cognitive behavior therapy is uh, requiring professional consultation. It's about controlling certain um, emotions. For six weeks, after six weeks of this intervention, 60% of patients reported that the symptoms were improved. In hypnosis, acupuncture, and stellate ganglion block can also ease these symptoms. And uh, it would require time and invasive intervention. And the primary uh, actions the patients could take would be as follows, yoga and mindfulness. These can help weight control and dietary intervention also helps in lifestyle change, lowering room temperature, using portable fan, and uh, try to avoid uh, hot food and try to uh, manage your temper could uh, also provide positive impact. So I am sure patients have taken these uh, drugs, non-breast cancer patients, uh, to relieve symptoms of post-menopause, black cohosh, Amash and Remifemin can help, according to reports. And I receive questions whether it's okay to take these drugs. But and actually, they work as weak estrogen. The actual efficacy and safety of these drugs are not fully validated, even for healthy women. And um, much less data for breast cancer patients. So I don't think it is uh, good for breast cancer patients to take these drugs. If symptoms get severe, is there no other way? Not really. There are available drugs. And the most effective therapy uh, is to induce estrogen. Uh, inducing estrogen to breast cancer patient uh, is not recommended to relieve postmenopausal symptoms when it's induced the recurrence uh, increases by 1.4 to 3.6 times and for uh, preventional purpose uh, if you take tamoxifen there is a comparison study of taking and non-taking and taking hormone drugs non-tamoxifen group there was a, a effect but tamo, uh, vaccine, tamo, uh, vaccine taking, tamoxifen taking patients, not much difference. So uh, for breast cancer patients, it's not strongly recommended for breast cancer uh, patients to relieve postmenopausal symptoms. It's not recommended to uh, use uh, estrogen. What about other uh, drugs? Uh, the flashes and chillings can uh, get help from other drugs, and neurontin is can be used uh, to reduce for 
hot flashes by 40 to 70 percent. But as you can see, all of drugs have adverse e effects. Mouth dryness, decreased appetite, nausea, and uh, vomiting can happen. Drowsiness can also follow and dizziness. So you have to consult with your doctor and understand the uh, side effects and then have a clear understanding about expected benefits. Next, uh, musculoskeleton symptoms. With tamoxifen, uh, compared to tamoxifen, with aromatase, there are more uh, symptoms of MSS. After taking this medicine, they all uh, take they all say the same thing. I feel like I'm 80 years old. Joint pain, joint stiffness, and uh, muscle awakening um, are reported. Mostly in central joint, spine, hips, and shoulders. And for elbow, wrist, and knees as well. Uh, these symptoms do not appear immediately after taking the medicine. It takes about six weeks to uh, express. And uh, in about six months time period, the, pay, the symptoms are strongest. So after taking medicines, I always check uh, about six months time frame. Uh, the the surveys say 45%, but in the clinical uh, field, the frequency is much higher. And it depends on the timing of the menopause, the frequency, and the severity of symptoms. Less than five years, 45 to 73%, the high frequency, uh, uh, severe pains. But after 10 years um, since menopause, uh, they complain less uh, symptoms. So there are musculoskeletal symptoms after taking on drugs, but it's not 100% uh, negative. In many studies, uh, patients with symptoms had longer survival uh, rate compared to patients who did not. So those with these symptoms um, are having a very effective estrogen uh, suppression uh, results. With MSS, the first thing patient can do, the proven um, program is physical exercise. Um, they uh, are hesitant of uh, moving around because of the joint pains, but it's important to have physical exercise. Without exercise, um, there's a 3% increase with exercise. There's a 30% reduction of symptoms. So 150 minutes of aerobic activities and then a little bit of weight training per every week. Acupuncture can help uh, in MSS and easing the pains of MSS. Yoga and mindfulness can also help. And this is actually not uh, pa what patients can do, but the uh, neuromuscular taping can be done by professional uh, clinics. So these would be the primary um, things that uh, patients can try. With MSS, uh, they do not take drugs, but there are health supplements. Most representative one is omega-3. Omega-3 is, uh, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, omega-3 fatty acid have demonstrated efficacy in reducing joint pain intensity. So there was a study uh, for breast cancer patients, but in the patient group, the effectiveness was not proven. But for overweight uh, patients with BMI higher 30, uh, taking omega-3 uh, significantly improved pain scores. But we do not prescribe omega-3 for this purpose. And there is a study in vitamin D. Only one study showed effectiveness, and the rest of studies did not confirm the effectiveness. So taking vitamin D. It's not generally recommended for control of MSS. 
uh, what should be used for the prevention of bone density loss during therapy with AI. Let's now talk about pharmacological intervention. Symbolta is a commonly used drug, not only for breast cancer patients, re for rehabilitation. Um, this uh, drug is prescribed, and this is antidepressant uh, depress depressant too. And some patients take this to ease uh, joint pain. And with this, 70% uh, of, uh, of uh, reduction in symptoms. But there are adverse effects such as fatigue, nausea, mouth dryness, and headache. Of course, uh, these side effects will occur in the beginning, but sometimes patients cannot continue uh, this drug due to these um, AE. So please talk to your doctors. And uh, there are different types of aromatized inhibitor. And if uh, it's switched to uh, other product, uh, a AE could be reduced. So if you have a severe MSS, talk to your doctor and um, discuss uh, your symptoms with doctors. Next, sexual dysfunction. Most of patients uh, do not really openly discuss sexual dysfunction. There are many different types of dysfunction. Due to surgery, there is a psychological effect. And due to antidepressant, uh, there is a vaginal dryness and vaginal discharge. And that can lead to dyspareunia. So sexual dysfunction cannot be uh, discussed on, uh, in a single uh, perspective. There should be multiple aspects consideration and uh, vulvovaginal atrophy is found in 20 to 50 percent of postmenopausal women on AI. I mean symptom includes vaginal dryness and dyspareunia and not only in this area but also the genitourinary syndromes can be found which includes urgency dysuria and recurrent UTI. With uh, vulvo vaginal atrophy, for mild symptoms, regular use of vaginal uh, lubricants help. Lubricants without estrogen is available. So the regular use of vaginal moisturizer can help, and lubricant is used acutely prior to intercourse. The usage of moisturizer, if the, that cannot help, uh, that is a severe case, then local hormone-based therapies could be used. In this case, uh, it uh, increases the systemic level of the hormone, but it does not exceed the postmenopausal level. So, for aromatized inhibitor patients, uh, they should be more careful. Um, and this hormone therapy is not the first uh, line therapy, but if the pains are too severe, upon consulting your doctor and considering recurrence probability, you can use this one. And then another common symptoms are weight gain and fatigue. Weight gain uh, has a very negative results. The risk of recurrence increases and mortality increases and lymphedema and fatigue also increases. So uh, weight control is important to improve breast cancer outcomes, reduce treatment induced side effects. And what we can do is uh, diet in cognitive behavior therapy. If I maintain standard weight, you continue physical exercise. But for overweight patients, calorie must be controlled, 500 to 800 calorie reduction and 200 to 300 minutes of exercise per week. But um, I guess uh, we all know that it's not uh, it's easier said than done. So a lot of uh, effort and investment is required. Next is fatigue management. Physical exercise helps reducing fatigue. 
and cognitive behavior therapy helps reducing fatigue and as for additional benefits, there is a significant less functional impairment and psychological distress and better quality of life. This is my take home message. As I mentioned before, there are side effects and regular exercise can reduce MSS, which helps weight gain and reduction of fatigue. Good lifestyle habit relieves symptoms from endocrine therapy as an adjuvant treatment for breast cancer and improve quality of life. And uh, you should never discontinue the drugs just because of adverse effects. There are other supporting measures to help you uh, complete uh, this regimen and treatment. So please continue to, to talk to your doctors and try not to discontinue uh, this treatment.